This is your Barbados Today News Update for Monday, July 19th. A new man is at the helm of the United Progressive Party, and he's already challenging government to do more for Barbadians facing tough times. Wayne Griffith was elected to the post at the weekend, and among his concerns is the high unemployment rate. The latest report from the Barbados Statistical Service shows that more than 22,000 are without jobs. And Griffith tells Barbados Today government should use its loans funds to develop a strong social development policy program. We in UPP believe that it's much more than that first thing. Because uh, there are so many people who were in the informal sector, lost home based businesses, who um, may have not been counted in those statistics. So, uh, what we would like to suggest is that the government look at ways of um, actually being able to first actually record who is really unemployed and look at their home situation, and, and I think that's a better, a better procedure. But also, all the loans that the government has been getting recently, we want to see more of it being spent on ways of improving the lives of our buildings at this time. I um, don't think the enough effort is being made to let this external financing reach um, the average Barbadian. It seems as though they're really not trickle down economics or something, but we want to see it directly impact the lives of the average Barbadian. Griffith, who formerly served as the UPP's General Secretary, also served notice that the party is readying itself for the next general election, constitutionally due in 2023. There has, however, been speculation of a possible early poll. And I think that's what we're going to develop moving next year. Um, the, the real mandate is to, to develop some policies and figure out how we're going to turn around uh, enough votes that we can be uh, a better force in the next election. And we both understand, we all understand how bad we don't see about the new political entity, but that's not, I mean, that's not facing us at all. We are up to the challenge, and I mean, believe as a team, we're going to get together over the next few months and come up with effective strategies to, to let people understand what the APP is about and what our philosophy is <coughs> and how it suits Barbados into the future. In other news this Monday, discipline must remain a top priority for the Royal Barbados Police Force. That's the view of Acting Superintendent of Police, Roderick Walcott, at a recent Police Executive Leadership Seminar. He stressed that discipline must be supported at all levels if the rule of law is to be respected by officers and citizens. Internal discipline and the appropriate regulatory system is critical to maintaining a disciplined organisation. As leaders in the Royal Barbados Police Force, effective treatment to disciplinary matters must be effectively dealt with. As such, this program would not have been complete without instruction in this area. The investigations of complaints against police was attributed the importance with which it must be considered by future leaders of the Royal Barbados Police Force. The two-week seminar saw 15 senior members of the Royal Barbados Police Force being trained in effective leadership strategies by officers from the Durham Constabulary in the UK, among other officials. COVID-19 has put a damper on the operations of the Barbados Vocational Training Board. In fact, according to Director Henderson Thompson, student enrollment has declined by 50%. Speaking during the board's virtual graduation class 2019-2020 at the weekend, Thompson said while the first semester commenced with 527 students enrolled in 24 different skills training programs in August 2019, scores of students withdrew from the program in the months following due to the pandemic. However, Thompson wants to see the institution using technology to respond to the challenges facing students. However, the board and its management met and discuss innovative ways of delivering vocational training in the face of a global pandemic. Educational delivery was curtailed as the country grappled with its first COVID-19 case outbreak. This, of course, was not novel to the Barbados Vocational Training Board as other educational institutions grappled with a response to delivery in light of the pandemic's lockdown and restrictions. What was clear is that the institution needed to ensure that we embrace technology and improve our access through digital challenges, channels to communicate and service our students. 
The board's mandate was to streamline our operations by improving our delivery to our key stakeholders and partners as we seek to ensure our students weren't disadvantaged and to complete training where possible. Throughout the period of our lockdown, we were able to deliver the theoretical aspects of a few of our programs online, while we awaited the official word from the government to outline the relevant protocols to resume face-to-face -face training. 152 people remained in isolation even as the country recorded seven new positive cases of the viral illness on Saturday. Three females and four males were the confirmed cases from 1,074 tests conducted. Barbados has recorded 4,258 confirmed cases of COVID-19 since the beginning of the pandemic in March last year. The Public Health Laboratory has carried out 201,418 tests to date. Under the National Vaccination Program for COVID-19, 97,874 first doses of the COVID-19 vaccine have been administered and a total of 73,179 persons, 30,127 males and 43,052 females have received second doses and are fully vaccinated. There's regional and international news after this short break. regional news in the Bahamas, the ruling Free National Movement Party is moving closer to being ready for a snap election. The political party has ratified its final four representatives to complete a full slate of 39 candidates, but the Prime Minister remains tight-lit on the date. More in this report from Eyewitness News. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Min is still tight-lipped as to whether or not he intends on ringing that election bell sometime soon. But for the dozens of Free National Movement supporters who showed up for the party's final round of ratifications at Holy Trinity Activity Center Thursday evening, they say they're ready. The next general election must be held by May 2022, and that's 10 months away. FNM incumbent for Bamboo Town, Minister of Health Renwood Wells says the party is ready for a win. The troops of the Free National Movement are ready, and we're able to get out there and to carry the message. Whether the runway is long or short, this administration is still going to take flight. As you can see, crowds continue to swell as election fever continues to intensify. So we put the question to government today as to whether or not they will be able to safely roll out rallies in the midst of a global pandemic. The most important thing for all of us is the safety of Bahamian people. Uh, rallies and all of those things are secondary. We have to keep up. On the international front, German Chancellor Angela Merkel has described the European floods as terrifying. She made the comment as she visited a devastated town as the death toll across Europe from flooding rose to 187. More in this report from Reuters TV. Germany's Chancellor visited Schuld on Sunday, where roads have been washed away, the sanitation system is submerged, and phone and internet networks are either down or unusable. Her visit came as the death toll across Europe, caused by record rainfall and floods, hit 187. 157 of those are in Germany. Merkel said there was no word in the German language to describe the scale of the devastation, as she promised swift financial aid. She also said governments would have to get better and faster in their efforts to tackle the impact of climate change. The European floods, which began on Wednesday, have mainly hit the German states of Rhineland-Palatinate and North Rhine-Westphalia, as well as parts of Belgium. Entire communities have been cut off, without power or communications. As efforts continued on Sunday to track down missing people, flash floods hit a district of Bavaria. Turning roads into rivers, sweeping away vehicles and killing at least one person. 
That's news, but for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media's in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.